Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is about adding a data driven approach to the game. So, so far, like all the entities that were spawned in the game, like items or enemies or the amulet, for example, you know, were introduced into the game programmatically by, by using by using different codes. So for example, the player, which we know, you know, is always going to be there. So we can create a function in Rust, but that is going to spawn the player and, you know, at a set location, and then it's going to add all this information, like its size, its health. We can also do the same with the amulet of Yala, which we know that it, that it's going to be one at the very end of the level. So, you know, we, we can choose, you know, if we are in level two, we can choose where the, where to put the amulet and we can you know spawn spawn like the sprite and everything and put it there so it was actually exactly the same previously with the different enemies so for example like when you know when we were like spawning like a like an enemy for example it used to randomly choose a location and allocate either an orc or a goblin or something like that into the game but now what I'm doing is something slightly different, which is that instead of designing the game programmatically, how, you know, the different enemies and items, how they are going to be placed into the map, I'm using like a template file, which is like a, from the RON format from Rust, where there is going to be a list of different templates, and each template is going to be a different entity. So, for example, there is going to be a, an entity which is going to be a healing potion or a weak healing potion or the dungeon map. There are going to be like some new weapons, as I saw in the previous video, like a rusty ward, sword, or like a shiny sword. And there are also going to be enemies like uh, goblins, orcs, ogres, etins. And here, you know, you can decide what's going to be their cliff. So for example the goblin is going to be like a G, which level it is going to, levels it's going to appear. So for example, only level zero. What's going to be their HP one? You know, how frequently are they going to appear? Like the goblin in this case not appears never, but the orc appears once and what's the base damage? So the idea is to separate like the engine of the video game which the programmer is doing uh, with the design of the video game, which is you know the different entities that the player is going to deal with which you know is going to be done by the game designer not so much by the by the by the programmer um so i'm going to do like a very quick demonstration as you can so you will see for example how easy it's to add new things so i'm just basically set the frequency of all the other entities to zero because i'm going to create like a new entity from scratch so let's say i'm going to create a new type of enemy which you know we are going to call like a dwarf and for example the cliff is going to be like the letter t and let's say it's going to appear in level zero only let's say the hp is going to be like five and it's damage it's going to be two. So now I've created like a complete new enemy that didn't exist before. And you know, this enemy is only introduced here, but with all the other stuff I have going on in the background, it's going to fetch this file and it's going to populate the map with enemies like this one. So I'm going to set the frequency to one. So now I'm going to start the game, as you can see, like the usual screen. And this is the player. And as it moves around and it goes to the first room, you can see that the dwarf appears. It says it's twice because there was also one in this room. So you can see the dwarf is here. So now I'm going to wait for the dwarf. And you can see it attacks me and it makes two damage, which is, you know, exactly what we said before. So for example, now I'm going to attack it and I make one damage. And I think it's going to kill me because obviously, um, you know, if I have 10 and he does 2 and I already did him hit me once, it's going to be even faster. 
so what i'm going to do actually is that i'm going to reduce his hp by a lot so his hp it's going to be just one now and his base damage is going to be two so this is like a way that you know you are going to see how very easily you can um debug the game just by reducing the hp of the enemy for example so now i'm going to move around and I find a dwarf, I'm going to let it come to me. The dwarf attacks me, its damage is 2. I'm going to attack him and I do 1 of damage. But because his HP is now 1, is the dwarf is dead. So you can see like how with this data-driven design it's very easy to add like new elements, new items, new enemies or different things that you can play. You know, with the damage, the frequency or or what they do. Like for example, like the potion, you know, provides a healing effect of six units. Um, the map provides the magic map, which is going to show the tiles. And yeah, basically all the design now is around here, and we we managed to separate to some degree the engine engine with the game design. So yeah, that was pretty much everything for today, which is also the very last chapter of the book. So probably the next videos I'm going to do are going to be like newer functionality. And yeah, I'm going to, hopefully I will start getting on some new stuff soon and I can upload more videos. Thank you for listening.